Well, we're beginning a new series called Let's Go. And I really believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to each of us that even though the church is as large as it is, there are not enough people saved. Would you agree with that? And somehow we can kind of say, well, we're a big church and we're big enough, but bigness has nothing to do with it. It's souls. And we have to stay focused on reaching people for Jesus. Let me make a, a statement here. You will understand the vision of Gateway Church fully when you see a friend set free. Let me say that again, but let me say it a different way. You will understand the vision of the kingdom fully when you see a friend set free. And here's what I'd like each of us to do. In 2010, let's pray that God uses each of us to bring someone to salvation and freedom in Jesus Christ. Will you do that? Both campuses, all right? All right, I want you to turn to 1 Kings chapter 3 and Numbers 27. All right, in other words, open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 3 and then put a marker at Numbers chapter 27. Numbers 27, all right? 1 Kings 3, Numbers 27. Now, we're going to talk about going, but let me just make this statement. I felt like I could not talk about going out until I talked about coming in. So the title of the message today is Coming In. And there is the phrase in the Bible that's actually repeated many times in the Bible that the first time I saw it, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what it meant. I had to look it up and, and keep reading Scripture and reading Scripture until I found what it meant. And I'll show you what it means in a moment. But let me ask you this. What, two questions. What did Solomon ask God for? Wisdom, right? Okay, here's the second question. Why? (laughs) He actually gives the reason. He's talking to God, and the Lord said, ask anything you want, and he gives the reason why he asked. He actually phrased it like he said, I want an understanding heart. God said, I'll give you a wise and understanding heart. We know that was wisdom, obviously. Look at 1 Kings 3, verse 5. 1 Kings 3, verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you've shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You've continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but, okay, here's the reason, I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. I don't know how to go out or come in. And he goes on to say in verse 8, your people are numerous. In verse 9, therefore give your servant understanding heart. All right, here's what Solomon said. I don't know how to come in and I don't know how to go out. My father knew how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And that's that's the reason I'm going to need wisdom. All right, so obviously before God gave Solomon wisdom... Solomon had a real problem with doorknobs, (laughs) obviously. Who do you think that's what it's talking about? Okay, go back to Numbers chapter 27, and this is where Moses is talking to God about a new leader for the children of Israel. I want you to notice what he says. Numbers chapter 27, verse 15. Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, Set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in or come in before them. It's actually the same word that's translated come in in 1 Kings. Who may lead them out and bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. Okay, isn't this amazing? Here's what Moses says. Okay, God, we need a new senior pastor. But there's one thing that I want the senior pastor to know how to do. I want him to know how to come in and go out. I want him to know how to lead the people out and how to bring the people in. Solomon, when he becomes the leader, says, there's one thing that my father, who was a great leader, knew how to do that I don't know how to do. I need to know how to come in and how to go out. Let me read you just a couple more scriptures. Just stay where you are there. Deuteronomy 31 verse 1 says, Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. 
<laughs> Here's his retirement message to the church. He says, I'm retiring, but there's only one reason that I'm retiring and you're getting a new pastor. It's because I can't come in and go out anymore. If I could come in and go out, if I could just get through some doors, <clears throat> obviously it's not what he's talking about. If I, could, if I could still do this, I could still be your leader, but because I can't do it, and I've already talked to God to make sure the new leader can do this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 6 says, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Again, we might have just thought that meant coming and leaving our house. John chapter 10 verse 9, Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Here's New Testament. He'll come in and go out through me. All right, go to your right, uh, past Deuteronomy to Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 14. And I'm going to show you what this means, all right? Joshua chapter 14, uh, page 162 <laughs> in the right Bible. All right, Joshua 14. Look at verse 11. This is Caleb now speaking to Joshua. Joshua 14, verse 11. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength, here's, the, here's what it's for, for war, both for going out and for coming in. Okay, Coming in and going out were military terms. They refer to warfare. You, here's what Moses said. We need a leader that knows how to lead the people out to war and how to bring them in for war. Solomon says, God, my father David knew how to do this. He knew how to go out. He knew how to come in. That's what, and I don't know how to do that. I'm going to need wisdom. So they were military terms. Now remember, everything in the Old Testament happened literally, but it's a spiritual picture to us. So I have a question for you. Are we still in a war? <laughs> spiritually. Are we in a war spiritually? So we need to know how to go out to war, and we need to know how to come in from war. And we're going to talk about going out next week, but I want to talk about coming in. Let me give you a word for coming in and going out to kind of bring it up to, to uh, the spiritual term, the spiritual world we live in. Coming in refers to worship, and going out refers to witnessing. The reason that they would come in from war is to be refreshed. And they would always go to the house of God first and offer sacrifices to God. They would always come in to the house.